Now chapter 11 is where we get to have a lot of fun. We finally, after everything we've done all semester, we've learned how to do, uh, calculate angles, calculate certain little things. Now we're applying everything together. All the math together now comes down to here where whatever problem exists, whatever it is we're looking for, we can figure a way to solve it. So in dealing with this, COGO, what that stands for is coordinate geometry. Most of the work is tied to a, a plane rectangular coordinate system. What I mean by that is we have either the state plane coordinate system or we have a local system. State plane is what uh, is commonly known and referred to, and that's something you're definitely going to be involved in. Um, later in the, the semester, near the end of the semester here, we will talk about state plane coordinates, uh, where they're derived from, um, what their uses are. Uh, till now, we've kind of dealt with local systems, where we just assume certain values of what our origin is and what our orientation is. Now the advantages to rectangle the coordinate system are as follows. Um, you can easily compute relative positions between uh, two points or multiple points. It's easy to plot the coordinates. You can easily compute unknown positions using other known positions. Uh, you can, uh, it's easy to generate computations, like I said. <coughs> So some of the computations we've dealt with uh, in the past, uh, and that will continue on in the future here, are knowing how to compute azimuth. So we just uh, discussed that in chapter 10. Lengths through inversing in chapter 10. Uh, we can compute area. That's just creating uh, uh, the, the right size triangles to be able to compute whatever area it is you're looking for. Uh, there's other methods to do so. Um, we can compute the intersection of two lines, intersection of a line in a circle. This is uh, its uh, intersection of a line with known azimuth with line of known length. That's when you're dealing with uh, intersection of a line in a circle. Intersection of two circles. Unknown location, but known distances of two connecting lines. So let me just go through a few of these common equations before we get into one of the Two of the problems I want to make sure that we cover and understand very well. So here you've got a triangle. Uh, we've dealt with this before, law of sines, law of cosines. Dealing with knowing the, uh, the lengths of the sides of a triangle, with knowing the, uh, the opposing angles, which uh, the opposite angles between those lengths. And you can compute uh, whether you're looking for lengths or angles throughout this. And we will actually use part of this on one of the problems that we do throughout the uh, Doing, doing this uh, coordinate geometry stuff. Quadratic equation. Uh, we talked about distance formula. <clears throat> so you can, if you have two points and that's uh, inversing, or uh, if you have coordinates of two known points, then you can get a, a horizontal distance between those two points by using this equation right here. Uh, line formula, we've uh, I haven't really gone over, but that's something you've learned from, uh, from algebra, learning out if you have one point A, one point B, you know, Y equals N, X plus B, that, that type of stuff, you know how to compute new locations and new points on where the, what that's at. Uh, so I want to keep in, keep in mind that, okay, here we deal with the azimuth, we, we learned what that is, the, the inverse tangent, the departure over latitude, that's important. Plus C. C is just a little uh, factor allows you to make sure you are um, placing in the right location when you're dealing with tangent. And down here you can see what the, uh, the values of those those fall to be. If uh, departure and latitude, <coughs> excuse me, departure and latitude are both greater than zero, then C is equal to zero. If uh, C is 180, if the latitude is less than zero. You can see it's 360, the departures are less than zero, and the latitudes are greater than zero. And you can go through here that uh, in this formula here, it doesn't deal with azimuth, but you can correlate the azimuth, which is m, which is the slope, which is taking the, uh, the difference in, which it's rise over run, so the difference in uh, your y value over the difference in your x value is equal to the cotangent of the azimuth of AD. And you go through and, and you know, kind of try and figure some of that out if, uh, if you really want. Uh, how to derive it, I'm just giving the equation here. And then you can again solve for the azimuth of AB by, by rewriting. All this is is just a re rewriting of what we already do now. 
what we already have. Again, distance formula, it's a big one. You're always going to use that and need that. And again, here's your azimuth. Circle, common equation for a circle. Uh, if you know a point on a circle, you know the radius, or you're looking for the radius and you know the two coordinate points, then you can find out what the radius is. That way you compute any other point on that, on that circle. Now here's the big one I want to get into. This will take a little bit of time to see and understand what's going on, but you've got to take the time to be able to do this. Uh, you, you, this is something for sure you're going to be involved in, and you need to understand the principles before you... Literally, you could royally mess things up if you don't understand what's going on. So this is something I want you to take close care of and understand what uh, really what's going on. If you look here, I have three coordinate axes. I have an XY system. I have an X prime and a Y prime system, and I have a northing and an easting system. That means three coordinate axes, all with different orientations and different uh, different locations of where the origin are. Now, the one thing I want to keep clear and understand, the, there's two ways to look at this. I'm going to teach you one way, is that the points on the ground, point A, point B, point C, point D, are fixed. Those are fixed. They are not moving. Just like we talked about a magnetic declination, a line on the ground always is that same line on the ground between two known points. So here, what we're talking about is, I know the values of those coordinates in one coordinate system, meaning the XY system, the blue, the blue lines here. Now what I want to do is change where my axes are by through either rotation or through translation. So there's three steps that we find in a 2D conformal coordinate transformation. First is rotation, second is scale, and the third is translation. And I'm going to go through each of these. I'm going to take this example that we have right here so I can show you how I derive the equations we derive and how we come up with the, what it is we're looking for. And so you can understand really what's going on. Let's take, for example, the XY system. That was the blue system on the previous slide. My points A, B, C, and D, again, are fixed. They won't move. So what we have here is A has an X component and a Y component. B also has an X and a Y component in this system. C has an X and Y component, and also D has an X and Y component. Now I want to go, I want to do a rotation to the X prime, Y prime system. The reason I'm only talking about a rotation is you can see that the origin, the origin is the same for both axes. All you can tell is that there's just a rotation between, a rotational difference. So now the red is my X prime, Y prime system. And like I said, A, B, C, and D did not move. So all I'm doing now is saying that in the X prime, Y prime system, A has different X coordinate, X value and a different Y value. Same thing for B. Same thing for C, and the same thing for D. They all have different uh, values as opposed to the X and Y system, the green system. So what we need to do is to be able to calculate our rotation angle. We need to figure out how, how we're going to be able to do that. So like I said, A, B, C, D are fixed on the ground. They're not moving. I'm going to reiterate this a million times just to make sure that we understand really what's going on. So C and D are fixed. So if C and D are fixed, we, it means we know the coordinates, like I showed you before, we have known coordinates in the X and Y system for both C and D, and we also have known coordinates in the X prime, Y prime system. So you remember this equation we dealt with before is finding the azimuth. So how about finding the azimuth of line C, D in the X, Y system, and then finding the azimuth as well in the X prime, Y prime system. We can do that here. So now you have two azimuths. One is alpha in the X, Y prime, X, Y system. And now we have beta in the X prime, Y prime system. You see that all that C and D did not move. I'm just referencing C and D, line C and D, in both systems. So each has an azimuth, has their own azimuth, which is referred to the north line. And those are the components that it looks for. So to figure out what the rotation angle between these two coordinate systems then is theta right there. Simply alpha, the larger angle, minus theta, the smaller one, or the the, uh, the azimuth in the x prime y prime system. 
So now that we know what the rotation is, <coughs> we can figure out what the scale is. Now scale, on here, you're not going to be able to see it very clearly, um, but when you start dealing with local systems and state plane coordinate systems, there are scales that are involved. So what that means is, you can have uh, a line C and D that in different systems are different lengths. So in my local system, or in my X prime, Y prime system, I could say it's 20 feet. I have some sort of tape measure that measures that out to be 20 feet. In my new system, I have a, a new tape measure that says it's only 10 feet. It just matters of what you're going to use to measure it with. So therefore, we can calculate a scale and also determining that translation from one system to another, which incorporates rotation we just finished, as well as scale. So we need to determine the distance from C to D. We need to determine that distance in the XY system and in the X prime Y prime system. And the scale that we end up with is just the two system, meaning we want to know where we're going to, which is the X prime Y prime, over the from system. And that's how you calculate the scale. Is. So those distances then, the distance formula is what allows us to create that scale. Take the distance in the X prime Y prime over the distance in the XY system.